Dr. Sanjay Tolani, a visionary and financial strategist, son of an insurance legacy. By 19, he became an insurance prodigy with a PhD in finance and degrees in banking, risk management, and actuarial science. Dr. Sanjay quickly rose to the top. At 24, Dr. Sanjay became the youngest CEO for a multifamily office in the Middle East. He's now a trusted advisor to high net worth families in 53 countries. Dr. Sanjay's innovative financial strategies protect financial futures, including tax planning, inheritance planning, and intergenerational planning. But Dr. Sanjay's expertise extends beyond finance. He is a coach, author, and speaker for over 100,000 business and professionals worldwide. Today, Dr. Sanjay Talani has changed the world of finance, ensuring peace of mind for individuals and businesses. With his dedication to excellence, Dr. Sanjay is a true visionary, leading towards a brighter financial future for the world. All right, welcome to Insurance Specialization 2023. We have people from all over the world. We we'll start a little bit later, but it's 7.13 p.m. Singapore time right now. And of course, we have in just a few moments time, Dr. Sanjay Tulani. If this is the first time you're listening to Dr. Sanjay Tulani, here's a brief intro. He's, he's a 20, 21 times MDRT, two times COT and 17 times TOT member, right? So Dr. Sanjay actually did more than 500 times MDRT uh, worth of production just last year. And how does he do it? Well, through specialization. Today, he'll be covering asset management, family office, risk management and corporate financial planning. Right. This is exactly how you want to uh, position yourself to break into the high net worth space to deal with uh, cases with which with bigger premiums, talk to businesses with a lot of money. All right. So with none other than um, sorry, this is the first time doing this in a while. Sorry. So let's uh, introduce Dr. Sanjay Tulani. All right. What happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, I'm Harris. Like, I'm just like stumped. I haven't seen you in a while. Hey, it's well, all right. It's How are you doing? You. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Good. Take good. Good, good. Go. Go on. Go on. Thank you. <laughs> all right, guys. I do want to spend some time with you now. Before we start today's session, um, I do want you all to just tell me which country you're from, right? So if you can put in the chat box, I would love to know which country you guys are from. Um, I'm just trying to find uh, the comments so that I can understand, I can see everyone. Okay. Uh, if you can just write which country you're from, that'd be really cool. Okay. Uh, technology does know how to fail itself, so don't worry about that. from Singapore, from Dubai. Wow, all right. Hey, Amy, hey, Alison, so good to see you guys. Abu Dhabi, wow, so we've got people from Abu Dhabi and the Philippines, fantastic, all right. Hey, Indresh, good to see you. Um, I'm just trying to see everyone's comments, so it's easy for me to kind of stay up to date with you guys, and I wanna make sure that, uh, wow, we've got Porn Power here from Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny wants my book in Gujarati. Thank you, Johnny, for asking that. All right, guys, today's session is probably one of my favorite uh, topics for two reasons. Number one, it allows you to kind of grow into this business. It allows you to know how to develop yourself in this business. So if you could do me a favor, could you write down how long you've been in this business? So if you could tell me how long you've been in this business, I would love to know more about you. Uh, today's session is a session specifically for each one of you to learn what I have done to go from one level to another level and then moving up that level every year consistently over and over again, right? So if you could tell me how many years you've been in the business, that'd be very nice. Wow, we've got guys from the Philippines. Oh, wow, from Cyprus as well. This is absolutely brilliant. Hey, Jenny, good to see you here. Henry from Singapore. Agnes from Malaysia. Nice. All right. 13 years, wow, 20 years. Sudhakar, 21 years, God bless you, well done. Binti, almost 10 years in the industry. 
Dorothy is asking, where am I broadcasting from? I am right now in Dubai. Um, so I am in Dubai. All right. Tanaki is from six years. All right. Amy, you have been in the business as long as I've been alive, man. God bless you. Well done. Uh, Latifa, 30 years. Wow. Five years. All right. Good to see you, Sabrina. Guys, I want you all to think about a few things today, right? So today is about understanding a little bit of our business. What makes you different from other advisors in the market? And I want you to think about this. What makes you different from other advisors in the market? We all have almost the same products. Actually, we only have four products. And I want you all to remember this. We only have four products. You die, I pay. You fall sick, I pay. You retire, I pay. Your kids go to college, I pay. There is only four products in our business. And as soon as you understand this, that our product offerings are almost the same, irrespective of which country you're in, your competition will have the same product. So if all of us have exactly the same products, we all have the same premiums, we have the same benefits, what makes you different? What makes you different? I know some of you are thinking, Sanjay, you've done your MDRT, you've done your COT, you've done your top of the table, we've, you've done all these different levels uh, of achievement in our progress, in our business. As a business owner, I want you all to think about this. As a business owner, each one of you is a business owner. You don't work for an insurance company. You represent an insurance company, right? You're not working for them. You're representing them. And as a representative of that company, you're a true solopreneur. You're an agency manager. You're managing a business. What are you doing to make your business look different from other similar businesses? I want you to think about this. See, he's been in the business seven years. Wow. Chan has been in the business 45 years. Wow, guys, that's absolutely stunning. So I do have uh, the chat box over here. So I've got all the messages coming in here on the other side. So I do keep looking back at the screen to make sure that I can see uh, all of you all in terms of where you guys are from as well. Because guys, like I said, this session is for you, right? It's not for me. It's for all of you. Um, the purpose of this session was to give you an idea of where we are going, how you need to change your business, how you need to change your strategy. So there are two things that you have to recognize in a business, the top line and the bottom line. Now, in our business, the top line is the premium collected. Remember this, guys, the top line is our premium collected. If your top line is big, your bottom line can automatically be improved. Listen to this very carefully. Your top line is big. Your bottom line can automatically be improved. Your job is to focus on top line. Gloria, I'm so glad you woke up 5 a.m. in Mexico. Congratulations. Uh, Stephen, yes, 15 years looks very small when you have veterans in the business who are, who are listening into this session, right? 39 years, 45 years, your 15 years does look small. When you're looking at all the veterans, guys, insurance is a generational business. I'm a third generation financial advisor. And as a third generation financial advisor, there are a few things that I want you to understand. That if you build the right system, it becomes a generational business for you. If you build the right structure, it becomes a generational business for you. So if all the clients are getting the same offering, the same product, the differences are very small. Please understand something. The difference between company A, company B, company C, company D is so small that there's actually very little difference that would make you stand out. So what truly makes you stand out is what you do. Yip has asked a question. What do you mean by top line? Top line basically means how much premium do you collect? I want all of you all today to keep commission aside. I want you to stop thinking about commission. All right. And today I want you all to focus on how much premium should I collect? If you were getting paid zero for doing your business, if you were getting paid zero to do this business, how much would you want to collect from your clients? I want you all to remember this. It's not about the commission. 
commission is a product is a variable commission is a percentage of premium collected can we all agree on that guys that commission is a percentage of premium collected correct so if if premium if the premium is high the percentage is automatically high correct or not if the premium is high the the amount of money you earn is automatically high so today i want you all to think about this how much premium do you want to collect how much premium do you want to collect and I want you all to stop thinking about regular premium and single premium. I want you all to think about a number. The problem is we are always thinking, oh, I want to collect a million dollars in regular premium. I want to collect $5 million in single premium. I want to collect $10 million in, in regular premium. I want you to stop thinking regular premium and single premium. I want you all to start thinking premium collection. It doesn't matter whether you do it monthly, annually, quarterly, single premium, it doesn't matter. What truly matters is how much premium do you want to collect? All right, so Johnny says more than five crores. Okay, Johnny, more than five crores means it could be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So set that as your minimum. The minimum premium I want to collect is five crores. So don't say more than 30 million, 20 lakh rupees. All right, so Nita says I want to collect 20 lakh rupees. Gurdeep says I want to collect one crore rupees. Cindy says, I want to do one case, one MDRT. Fantastic, Cindy. All right. Uh, Rajesh says, I want to collect 10 million Indian rupees. All right. Five crores, five crores. So Niru is saying five crores. Banu says five crores. Saurav says 10 crores. Okay. Now you're collecting premiums. Navita, it's very interesting. When you say uh, higher premium is higher commission. Actually, higher premium your commission is automatically high. And I want you all to remember this. So Rajesh says, I want to collect 35 lakhs. Stanley says, I want to collect 1.5 million. Amit says, I want to collect 1,000 crores. Amit, great number. Catherine says, I want to collect 10 million. All right. So now that you have set a target in terms of premium collection, who are you going to collect it from? So the next step is to identify who are your potential clients, right? So guys, it's not about prospecting. The first step is targeting. The first step in our business is targeting, not prospecting, targeting. Who do I actually want to work with? What is the target market for me to be able to collect this premium? So if you say I want to collect and that's what I want. Josh, I don't want you to write 10 million APE. APE has no purpose, right? Stop thinking APE. Uh, Latifa says, I want to do 20 cases with 1 million ringgit. Okay, so I want to do 1 million ringgit. Uh, Shirley says, I want to collect 350,000 RM. Okay, all right. So the question is now, if you want to collect 1 million, 350, I don't care what that number is, who are you going to collect it from? So Kamlesh says, Imaratis are my target. Um, Teresa, stop thinking APE. This APE, APE has no concept. I want you to remove that word APE from your dictionary completely. All right. I want to collect 20 million pesos, period. Whether you collect it on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, annual basis, it doesn't matter. It's about collecting that money. That's what you focus on. All right. <laughs> high net worth and super high net worth and entrepreneurs. Okay. Now, I love it when people say I want to collect from high net worth. I want today, I want you all today to choose which high net worth people you want to work with. Because there are high net worth people in every part of your society. There are high net worth people who are into real estate, there are high net worth people who are into manufacturing. There are high net worth people that are in oil and gas. There are high net worth in IT. There are high net worth in medical sciences. There's high net worth in, in logistics. There are high net worths in teaching. There are high net worths in so many different business segments. So today, I want you to start identifying which 
business segment which professional so when you say business owners mary santosh um i want all of you all to now start writing what businesses do you want to focus on which industry high net worth shakes all right so kamlesh sirwani wants to focus on on royal family members that's brilliant all right so kamlesh number 1 royal family members write this down businessmen doctors in the di diamond business all right so niru businessman is a very broad word i like to work with diamond or jewelers all right so write down jewelers businessman okay atul i want you to define businessman all right um rahul says i want to work with man money authority <laughs> okay investors in business and properties who are married with minor children all right tony i want you to become even more specific which business how yeah vivian we will vivian raj we will i will discuss about how to meet those people but i need you all to first start choosing industries doctors okay that's better doctors automobile uh business men who are doctors all right manufacturers okay which manufacturers their manufacturing is a very big industry so which manufacturers family run manufacturing business which manufacturers cindy so i want you to think start thinking which manufacturers textile uh, steel uh, plastics glass all right textile owners in singapore all right nas has got at least nas good i'm glad textile owners high net worths all right shipping lawyers automobile palm oil related all right hendra you've got a very good industry that you're looking at palm oil okay you know the reason why i'm asking you all these questions think about it think about it almost all of you are thinking the same industries how many none of you wrote oil and gas none of you have written logistics none of you all have written new energy wind solar um and that's the purpose of today's session i want you to realize we all are looking for the same clients we're not looking little differently agriculture there we go at last someone is now someone's looking at the film industry all right vinita that's great it industry i want you all today to spend time on refining your target market because once you identify who you want to work with step number 2 is where do you find these people so prospecting the reason why so many of us have a prospecting problem is because we haven't targeted who are the potential clients that i want to work with you haven't built a strategy to have a conversation with that particular specialization you're not a specialist rishi we'll come to prospecting later first you need to identify your target market transportation startups and small businesses startups in which area startups is such a big market guys airline industry so atul when you say airline industry do you want to work with pilots cabin crew food suppliers uh, aircraft uh, aircraft maintenance companies aircraft manufacturing uh, aircraft servicing there's so many parts of that that you have got to think about it rajesh drone manufacturers great joanna beauty and wellness fantastic do you realize none of you have written social influencers none of you all have written social influencers geothermal companies i'm glad retirees perfect yes at last ani youtubers and social media influencers and that's what i want you all to realize there are so many target markets available for you there are so many clients in front of you all around you the question is the question is why should they work with you schools and universities great petroleum yes all right so we've got 
a few industries. Guys, for those of you who don't know which target market, go through the comments. Artists, musicians. How many of you thought about working with artists, dancers, musicians, theater, um, authors? Um, there are so many different businesses around the world. And that was one thing that I want you all to write down today. The reason why I'm getting everyone to tell me where they want to work, it gives you an idea of how big the world is. Very interesting. None of you all have written space, space tourism. Companies that are investing in space tourism, companies that are invest investing into virtual assistant and bookkeepers. All right, that's a great idea. Working with BPOs, business process outsourcing companies, right? Um, Budi, the problem is, so Budi has asked a very interesting question. How do we start to work with them? That's the problem. So let me tell you how to start working with them. Number one, once you've identified these target audience, right? The next step is finding out where do they sit? Where can you find these target audience people? Where do you think they sit? Where do you think they go? Misty, I'm so glad you added gamers. Yes, the gaming industry has become a huge industry. Arlene, government officials, very few people specialize in the government official market. Stanley Construction is, is there, hospital staff. Yes, Rajesh Ray, congratulations, that's fine. You can work with hospital staff. Uh, politicians, all right, best of luck. Not a very easy industry to work in. Chicken industry owners, all right. Celebrity tabla players, interesting Bharat, yeah, very interesting. Young entertainers, schools and universities. All right, so we've got targeted now. Now we've identified target markets, all right? So those of you who don't know what target market is, I want you to go through this entire list of industries that were mentioned in the comment section. I want you to go and find a target market that you like. Because when you like that target market, the next step is to understand what are the problems that that target market has. Okay, so before we even go to prospecting, right, before we go to prospecting, what is the problem in those target markets? What is the problem in those target markets? I want you to think about that. So I want you to now start writing what are the problems that your target market has? What is their biggest concern? What is their biggest problem? I want you to write that down. We'll talk about problems first, then we'll come to needs. Gurdeep, we'll come to needs later. Let's first talk about the problems. What are the problems that are there in your target market? can't approach, can't find connection. We'll come to the approach later, guys. We'll come to the approach. You guys are still worried about approach. Okay, even if I teach you how to approach them, you will not know what to say. You will not know what to say, guys. Right? Even if I teach you how to approach them, you will not know what to say. So let's start talking about what is their problem. All right, doctors have no time to manage money. Gaurav, actually not true. They have a lot of time. Doctors do have a lot of time. Doctors do have a lot of time. All right, so sports professional, longevity of career. Yes, Hemant, very good. That's what you understand. Sports professionals don't have perpetual career options. Um, Adi, you've got the problem. Yes, they are too busy expanding their business. They don't know what to do with their, they don't know what to do with their money. Business uncertainties, Nita. Business owners love risk. I want you all to remember this. Business owners love risk. If you tell them why you're taking risk, you're, you're not their friend. 
business owners love risk. Um, Noreen, today's session is not about livestock uh, insurance. We're not talking about livestock insurance. We're primarily talking about financial planning for families, individuals, and business owners, right? So I'm not here to talk about livestock insurance. Um, Adrian, yes, charities, inconsistency of cash flow, fantastic. Uh, Tosca, business continuity is a succession planning problem. It is not a business problem. Business continuity is a succession planning problem. It is not a business problem. Financial illiteracy, that's not a problem, that's a, that's a pandemic. Um, <laughs> Rajesh, business owners are too busy with the present. Um, Cla yes, Claude, you're right. Electrical and mechanical service providers are prone to accidents. Yes. Business owners know how to make money, but are big bit ignorant about how to protect. Yes. Not liquid. Enormous bank loans and financing. Hendra, you're right. People are leveraged, right? So we've got leverage cancellation. All right. So we've got now problems. Once we have identified problems, now question identify solutions all right so i have a problem let's say so i'm going to give you a case study i'm going to give you a problem you tell me how would you solve it okay so i want you to think about this i work with a charity okay their biggest problem is fundraising every year they're trying to raise money for charity and every year they don't have enough money for charity what advice would you give them so i'm giving you this case study all right i'm working with a charity Let's say I'm working with a charity. The charity says, Sanjay, our biggest problem is fundraising. Every year, we're looking for more and more funds. What is the solution to that problem? Rahul, yes, long-term investments, but the problem is, what should they do? Yes, they need to do long-term investments, but what is a solution for a charity that has funding problems which is almost every charity what advice would you give them assigning personal guarantees and sureties very dangerous um will tell them to recommend to their existing clients we will come to doctors guys we will go through a few of these clients i will go through some of that endowment plans that mature every year jessica fantastic okay but again now you're looking at a product i want you to stop thinking product i want you to start thinking strategy uh use life insurance calvin okay giving payout of annuities that support their cash flow all right CT. correct messaging to their target givers okay how much do they need every year good question Amiza, very good question. I'm glad you have asked that question. But the problem is most charities don't know how much they need every year because every year that answer changes. Roy says, buy a UL and nominate an NPO. All right. Uh, be an inheritance. The donors need to create a charity fund. Yes, their charity. they already have a charity fund. Key man insurance training to expand the social media reach. Okay. Payouts. Joanna. All right. So let me give it to you, all right? I'm gonna give you the solution. You need three strategies to run a charity successfully. You need a short-term, a medium-term, and a long-term strategy. The short-term, and there are three types of funding you need as a charity. Short-term, medium-term, long-term funding. Short-term funding is money that you need for immediate charitable work. So you have to talk about how many people you want to help. So every year, if you want to work with, let's say, I want to support 300 children for education, all right? So our target is to build a fund that can support or, re or be able to collect enough money to support 300 students every year. If I get more than 300 students, if I get excess funds, I have to learn to start creating a fund that will support me in the years when I'm not able to raise capital, when I'm not able to raise funding, all right? So you have to learn to start talking to your contribution donors, right? You have to remember, people donate money for two major reasons. To either feel good or to look good. There are two reasons why people donate money, to either feel good or to look good. If you can understand what the purpose is of why donors donate money, 
then you know exactly what you should be focusing on. Some people do it to look good, right? So they want to get the marketing. They want to brand their family. They want to brand their business. They want to do corporate social responsibility. They want to show that they are responsible. They're helping back. They're giving back. Then give them the marketing coverage. You need to learn to build the right marketing strategy. Long term. Now, people who want to be long term, they, are, they believe that if I, can, if I can contribute and educate 300 children every year, or I can educate 30 children every year, 100 children every year, and I want to do it on a consistent long term basis, then we build a long term relationship with these donors. You have to remember there are three types of donors. Donors that are one time, donors that are there for a season, and donors that are there for a lifetime. Donors that are one time, donors for a season, donors for a lifetime. The strategy for each type of donor is different. The benefits to each type of donor is different. You cannot treat all the three donors in the same way. Can we agree to that? Can we agree to that? That donors cannot be treated equally. Every donor, based on the way they contribute, the commitment that they have with the charity is different. So I want you all to think about this. What advice would you give them? Perfect. So now let's look at another business owner. All right, I'm going to give you another case study. I'm working with a family. It's a family business. Um, they have three children. All right. They have three children. Uh, two boys and a, uh, two, two sons and a daughter. All right. Question. Father is the currently the chairman and the CEO of the company. Question. Who will be the future CEO? All right, I'm going to repeat the question. Family owned business. Father runs the business. He's the current chairman and CEO. He's got three children, two sons and a daughter. Who should be the future CEO? Muniza says, eldest son. Yes. <laughs> Who will be the future CEO? Muniza says, eldest son. Any other answers? Alfred says, the child that is active in the business. All right. The child who's able to be in front, face the company, speak and gain public image. Who is ready and competent. All right. The child that is most involved or interested in the business. All right. Someone that can run the business successfully. Can be decided depending on the talents of the kid. Interesting. The future CEO, the child who adds best value to the business during the experimental years. Fantastic. All right. Interesting. Audrey, the competent one. <laughs> uh, Lulu, depends on who among them shows interest and works there. Binu says, hire a professional. Forget about the kids. Excellent. <laughs> Whoever is best suited, even if it's an outsider. Right, Sudhakar. I'm so glad. All right. So, now, do you see how many different answers we have got? And this is what we call the advisory process, where we give multiple solutions to our to the clients. Mr. Client, one of the most important questions that you have to think about is who's going to be your future CEO? Is it going to be one of your children? Is it going to be an ex party? Is it going to be a third party from outside the family? Is it going to be your eldest son? Is it going to be your daughter? Is it going to be the most uh, most valuable face in the family. Who is it going, who's going to be the successor? So I spoke about something a few weeks ago. I spoke about inheritance and succession. There are two different words. Inheritance planning is talking about transferring assets from one generation to the next. Inheritance is transfer of assets. Succession is transfer of power. There are two different things. Inheritance is transfer of assets. Succession is transfer of power.
So it's not about who runs the business the best. It's not about the C, we're not talking about chief operating officer. We're talking about the chief executive officer. You might be the best operations guy, but you might not be the best face of the company. The CEO is usually the public image of the company. And it's not necessary that all children or even one of the children is a is one of the succeed uh, who succeeds in this business so today right i want you all to understand that as you identify the clients there are four specializations that i want you to specialize in there are four things i want you to specialize in number one i want you all to identify i want you all to identify what makes you different from a new advisor and an old advisor? What's the difference between a new advisor and an old advisor? A new advisor <coughs> has joined this business, is selling the same products. An old advisor who's been in this business 30 years is selling the same products, correct or not? A new advisor is selling the same products. An old advisor who's been in the business 25, 30 years is selling the same products. What makes you different? So Karima says experience, all right? But how do I quantify experience? How do I quantify experience? The way to quantify experience is what we call specialization. The way to quantify experience is called specializations. Unfortunately, in our business, in our business, nobody has classified specialization. So when I joined this business 22 years ago, my father, he told me, he's like, Sanjay, you've got four specializations to learn. And there are four specializations that you need to master. You have to do them one at a time. You cannot do all four at the same time learn to do one at a time, figure out which specialization you want to focus your energy on. All right. Not everyone needs to learn everything. I'll give you an example. When you look at your head, there's a different doctor for the head, for your brain. There's a different doctor for your eyes. There's a different doctor for your nose. There's a different doctor for your ears. There's a different doctor for your teeth, just your head. There's a different doctor for each part of your body, right? In the same way, in our business, there are four specializations. These are what we call the four general specializations. Then you can move further into super specializations. Today, I'm not going to talk about super specializations. I'm going to talk about the general specialization. So write these down. There are four specializations. Number one, asset management. Number two, risk management. Number three, family office management. Number four, corporate financial planning. So there are four specializations. Number one, asset management. Number two, number two, risk management. Number three, family office management. And number four, corporate financial planning. These are the four specializations. All right. You have to learn to choose one of them. So today I'm going to first of all give you the purpose and the meaning of each specialization. All right. So let's first start with asset management. When we talk about asset management, it talks not just about liquid assets. It talks about any assets that are there in the family. So I'll give you an example. Um, talent. Certain children have a certain talent. That talent is an asset in the family. There are certain skills, right? Uh, you might have medical skills in the family. You might have engineering skills in the family. You might have business skills in the family. That is an asset in the family. There are certain values that you pass on to your children. There are certain systems that you teach your children about money, about inheritance, about succession. It's also an asset in the family. Real estate, businesses. So let's write down the five asset classes first. There are five major asset classes that everyone has in the world, right? Cash, commodities, bonds, equity, and property. Cash, commodity, bonds, equity, and property. There are five asset classes. 
write these down guys no one's going to give this to you so i'm giving this to you five asset classes any sixth asset class is what we call a derivative any sixth asset class for example patents trademarks um uh, insurance um structured products derivatives like options these are all alternative investments all right there are only five major asset classes so i want you all to remember this now what should be your asset allocation all right what should be your asset allocation vipul you want me to repeat okay the five assets are cash commodities bonds equity and property thank you cap thanks for writing it down cash commodities bonds equities and property perfect all right what should be your asset allocation so zara says 20% each okay depends on your age and time frame for retirement mm. interesting karima i want you to think about this we're not talking about retirement planning we're talking about asset allocation on my balance sheet so i already have all these assets everyone has all these assets every single one of us has all these assets morally says risk profile let's find out the risk profile jalan says let's find out what's the risk appetite fantastic how about cryptos and nfts randy i like to talk about real assets um depending on income depending on identified needs of the client all right i want all of you all to think about this risk profile can we agree on one thing all our clients are risk takers when the markets are aggress are doing very well and all our clients are conservative when markets are losing money correct or not so when we talk about risk tolerance the problem is our clients risk tolerance changes every day if they had a fight at home suddenly they are conservative they get a lot of love at home suddenly they are risk takers asset liability ratio liquid assets should be higher cash should have a higher allocation all right ken let's agree on one thing cash is king but it's not the best asset class and the problem is and today that's what i want all of you all to understand you see you're giving me all the theory of asset allocation you're giving me the theory of asset management everything that each one of you is telling me is the theory depending on their financial goals depending on their age their life cycle hypotheses their risk their risk tolerance the risk reward the the equity debt ratio the liquidity ratios you're giving me everything that is good theory all of you all are giving me theory guys reality stop giving me theory let's talk about reality our clients want the maximum return with zero risk true or not our clients want maximum return with zero risk kamlesh says 50% property 20 equity 10 bonds commodity 15 cash 5 congratulations well done the best will be hassle free income generating assets well dorothy we all love that right appropriate portfolio mix all right guys and this is why asset management is such an important topic because we have a lot of theories on asset management how many of you have heard the diversification theory that you need to diversify all right how many of you have heard okay so dynamic allocation wow 
Morally, you and I are going to write a textbook on asset allocation together, all right? Low risk, medium risk, high risk. How many of you have heard diversification theory? So I want you to write this down. Diversification reduces risk, but also removes return. If you diversify correctly, you will never lose money, but it also means you will never make money. Concentration makes money. Diversification ensures you don't lose money. Diversification ensures you don't lose money. Concentration ensures that you make money. So, should you diversify or should you concentrate? Should you diversify or should you concentrate? Ah. Mr. Client, if you want to do true asset management, you need to learn to concentrate. You need to learn to concentrate on your business. You need to learn to concentrate on the right skills that you have. You need to learn to concentrate on where you have maximum control. Exactly. Stop talking about diversification. Wow. Corvin wants to talk about the Monte Carlo simulations. <laughs> We are not talking about the m and frontier today, all right? The Modigliani and the Miller frontier. We're not talking about that curve today. Um, it's interesting you say that. I've got the book standing right behind me. You see that red color book, which I'm pointing at? That book is purely on the Monte Carlo simulation and Modigliani simulations. So if you want to lose money, if you don't want to lose money, you need to diversify. But if you want to make money, you have to concentrate. And that's what family businesses do. That's what individuals do. They start concentrating. They start concentrating into real estate. They start concentrating on their business. They start concentrating into certain types of asset classes, which increases their risk significantly. You cannot diversify and concentrate. You have to choose one. And that's where insurance plays a role you see when we talk about asset management the first question that i ask them which asset class makes the maximum return when you're sitting down with a business family which asset class makes the maximum return for that family All right, guys, which asset class, which asset class makes the maximum return? If you're sitting with a business owner, the best asset class for them to invest is their business, not equities, not bonds, not cash, not commodities. It's their actual business. The best asset class for them is their business because that is where they've got maximum control and they've got calculated risks they understand the risk of their business risk understood is risk mitigated listen to these words very carefully risk understood is risk that is mitigated because you know how to handle risk that you understand the problem is risk that you don't understand should be transferred Risk that is understood is risk that is mitigated. Risk that is not understood should be transferred. Business is a risk that the families understand because they're business families. They understand their business. That is their biggest asset. And I tell them, please concentrate on growing your business. You should not be diversifying. You should be concentrating. If you're diversifying, diversify inside your business, diversify in your supply chain, buy your suppliers, buy your, buy your clients, learn to own the supply chain. So if you're a manufacturer, uh, let's say you're, the, you're a retailer for textiles, right? Learn to see how you can become a wholesaler. Think how you can become a manufacturer. From a manufacturer, think if you can own the, the mills where the textile is made. 
So think about it. Own the supply chain. The more you own the supply chain, the bigger your control on your business. You need to learn to concentrate, not diversify, but concentrate. And the best way to diversify is either you go vertically or horizontally, right? So there are two ways to own the supply chain. You can either own it vertically, which is you own the supply chain, or you own it horizontally, you buy out all your competitors and you reduce the competition. So you, you do mergers and acquisitions. I'm so glad you wrote this down. Risk understood is risk mitigated. So business owners should be focusing on their business instead of spending time trying to find out, should I buy properties? Should I buy equities? Should I buy mutual funds? Should I do bond investments? That is not what they are supposed to be focusing on. They should be focusing and concentrating their efforts on growing their business. Any risk that they don't understand, they should transfer to an insurance company. So I'll give an example. If you are scared of your receivables, you're scared that you will not get paid by your clients, you've got credit insurance. If you're scared that if my warehouse burns, what should I do? You've got fire insurance. If any key member in the, in the business passes away, falls sick, you've got key man insurance, which protects your companies. You focus on your business, the risks that you cannot handle, the risks you cannot manage, I will transfer those risks for you. And that is where asset management plays such an important role. And I'm going to take this further when we talk about the next, which is the next most important concentration, risk management. When we talk about risk management, we now start doing something called risk mapping. We sit down with a family, we sit down with a business, we sit down with, a, with an industry, and we identify all the risks that could affect the family, all the risks that could be, that could be very bad for the family. Those risks I want to either mitigate, avoid or transfer. Mitigate, avoid or transfer. Mitigate means I'm taking the insurance myself. It's called self-insure. Avoid is I'm trying to find ways to avoid it completely. And number three is transfer. If I cannot mitigate it, I cannot avoid it, I have to transfer it. So how many of you have spent time to study risk management? Identifying risks. So for example, let's say I'm sitting down with a family, right? A husband, wife with two kids. What are the biggest risks for that family? If the husband and the wife are both working parents, loss of income, loss of health, Loss of health, loss of income, loss of life, uh, loss of opportunity, regrets. We all live with regrets. So, you know, we keep saying life is short, life is short, life is short. No, guys, life is long. Please make sure you don't live with regrets. Life is very long. Please don't make, please make sure you don't live with regrets. Life is not short. If life is short, there's no regrets. Problem is life is long and that's why people have regret. If life is short, you have no regrets. You die before you get the regret. Life is long. That's why you have regrets. So when I talk about risk management, we're talking about finding ways to take risk without having to worry about the risk. Taking risk without having to worry about the risk. And that's where we play such an important role with our clients. And I want all of you all to understand this, that risk management strategies are different from one client to another. There is no one format that is available that will ensure all your clients in risk management. So learning the specialization is very important. Now, guys, we've got four of uh, five of my, uh, sorry, we've got four of my mentees who are here to share their ideas with us. All right. Five of our mentees who are here to share ideas with us. Benedict, Chris, Cynthia, Kaka, and Dibyandu. All right. All five of them will be sharing ideas. They all have learned different specializations. Um, I want to spend some time with them. I want them to answer certain questions for all of you. So I want you all to, we take a quick 10 minute break. All right. And in this 10 minutes, I want you all to think about what specialization will excite you? Remember, there are four. Asset management, 
risk management, family office, corporate financial planning. Now, out of these four, which one would you choose? All right. And I want you all to think about what are the different things you can do if that was your specialization. I want you all to start thinking. All right. After the break, I'm going to ask these guys specific questions. I don't have the questions yet. I haven't thought about it. But there are certain questions that I want to ask them specifically on why they chose a specialization and how they are focusing and building their brand and their credibility in that specialization. All right. So let's take a quick 10 minute break and we come back. All right. All right. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay. Uh, so just for everybody here, just make sure that you have your PDF notes. Uh, this is actually linked in the uh, live uh, uh, video right now that you're watching that the post, uh, I think it's pinned to the top. So you can get that if you have been, uh, if you have not been following along, there's actually a deck that's available. So you use PDF notes that you can download. Uh, at the same time, um, if you're interested, we're actually selling uh, the books. We have a bundle discount uh, for eight different books. We have the Estate Planning Playbook, the Concept Presentation Playbook, the Closing Playbook, Sales Maximizer, the Financial Planning Playbook, uh, the Perfect Mindset Playbook, both uh, blue and green, the Big Case Closer Mindset Playbook, and with a bonus for our prospecting video, which will be sent to you via email. Again, this is all uh, physical books that will be shipped to you if you're interested. Uh, all eight books for 157 US dollars. If you're interested in buying that, you can go to mentor.sanjaytulani.com slash bundle order forms. Again, that is mentor.sanjaytulani.com slash bundle order forms. And if you're also interested in a giveaway, we're actually doing a giveaway uh, right now, uh, if you want, you can head over to Dr. Sanjay Tulani's Instagram, that is at SR Tulani. Uh, you can take a picture, uh, post it on your Insta story or your feed, and you can tag Dr. Sanjay. We'll choose 10 winners uh, to give a, uh, a book as well. I think we've decided what book that is, but let me double check. Um, I'm not exactly sure which book. I'll double check what book we're giving away uh, later. But again, if you're interested to join this giveaway, uh, you uh, for 10 people, you take a picture and post it on Instagram, uh, either your story or feed, and tag Dr. Sanjay uh, Tolani. It's at SR Tolani. All right. So coming up next uh, in about five to six minutes time, uh, we have mentees from Dr. Sanjay's Big Case Closer Mindset uh, group. Uh, they will be sharing their specialization. Uh, for those that are interested in Big Case Closer Mindset, uh, that is available as well. You can find out more in the PDF notes. Uh, you can go to bigcasecloser.com. We are accepting new entry. Uh, but again, you have to go through a interview with Dr. Sanjay Tulani uh, first. All right. So we'll see you in about five minutes time. Thank you. And we'll see you soon.